Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and welcome to another episode of Synth Clips. Today we're going to talk about envelopes going to an amplifier, uh, in particular to do the volume of the whole sound, how it works over time. And um, I'm starting with a fairly init patch, and I have no filtering, and it is set, the, the uh, volume envelope is instant attack, full sustain instant release, what I call an organ envelope. So here's one of the ways that you can, you can build the shape of your envelope. And the first thing is to decide, while I'm holding this, especially if I'm holding it for a long time, where do I want the volume to end up? So if you're doing something like a marimba, a vibraphone, or something, something plucked, obviously the final volume needs to be zero. And so if you have a sustain parameter, you're going to set that to zero. If you're doing an organ type sound where you hold a chord and you never want the volume to, to go down at all, then you're going to want that sustain level set up to maximum. Uh, but what I'm going to show you now is how to consider where to put that sustain if you don't want to do either of those. If you don't want the sound at full volume and you don't want the sound to go to, to complete silence, you want it to end up somewhere in the middle. And why would you do that? The reason I typically do it is so that you can hit a chord, hold it, it comes out big and full, but then over time it fades down a little bit. Not enough to disappear, but a little bit to get out of the way so that when you strike the next chord, it's exciting and jarring again because you're being hit with that new volume. And it sounds like somebody's taking a lot of time to mix your pads over time, bringing them down a little bit. It's, it's a really nice thing, uh, regardless of whether you're doing strings or horns uh, or just pure synthesis. Um, it's nice to find a, a non-zero and non-max sustain. So I'm going to go into the editor. I hit menu, I hit edit, I hit patch edit. And I've these are four tones. I only have the first tone turned on. It's set to a nice stereo pad of analog synth. And right now, if I look at the TVA, which is their way of saying uh, volume envelope or time variant uh, amplitude envelope, um, and I go down to my times here, I have time one, two, three, and four. Time one is the time it takes to go from minimum to the first maximum. And so here's an instant, here's a little slower, and of course very slow. And once it gets to the max, um, the, uh, the Juno has another segment. So in other words, it lets you go up and then go to another segment at a certain level, and then go again to another segment. Um, but it's just one more segment uh, that allows you a little more flexibility. I'm not gonna use that for this. But if I go to time three, which is the rate that I'm falling to my sustain level, uh, you'll notice that it doesn't matter what my time setting is, because um, it's currently at max, so it doesn't matter whether it takes a short time to get to max from max or a long time to get from max to max, it doesn't really change. So the first thing I'm going to do is lower my level of my sustain, which is level 3, and I'm going to lower that to 0. And now you'll see that my time for 3 is very, very important. from as short as that to But again, like I keep saying in all of my videos, never turn a knob if you're not constantly restriking the key to hear what it's doing. Um, you have to restrike for an envelope setting because you want to re-trigger the envelope. If you're setting filters and you're just holding something, you don't have to keep restriking the key, just hold the key. But for envelopes, Make an effort to find a, a rhythm that lets you hear the part of the envelope you want to hear. In this case, I'm hitting it and holding it long enough to hear it get to its sustain level. And then as I turn it, you're hearing that time get longer and longer. And 
like I said, um, this is one of those sounds where I don't want the sound to go all the way to silence. And when you're setting your levels, make your times really short so you don't have to sit here and wait. I want, uh, you want to be able to hear quickly the difference in volume. So my, my time is set to zero, but my level, I'm going to start bringing it up. It's almost like two different sounds. You're hearing that very loud, peaky part in the beginning, but then you're ending on it holding. Now, as I, so as I bring that up, I'm going to bring it to where I want it to be sitting after 20 seconds or 15 seconds or something. So. Maybe I want it there. Now is the first time that it makes sense for me to be adjusting this time because listening to times without knowing what your final destination of your level is, it's kind of ridiculous. They're so interactive. So first, get that sustain level where you want it. And now all of a sudden, you're going to be able to make changes in the uh, decay time. That makes sense. And now the decay time is getting long enough that you're going to stop hearing it as a uh, kind of thing and start hearing it more as uh, just if I hold the chord, it's someone's going to slowly bring the mixer down to a more uh, mixable level uh, until I restrike. Maybe I'm going down too much in volume, so I go back to my level and bring it up a little more. You gotta wait. Now I can adjust it. And so now I have it fairly subtle where I'm hitting a chord and holding it, and it's just doing this very nice, um, slightly diving down underneath uh, level wise until I restrike. And then the next strike is a little more dramatic again because it's louder. And one of the really important things while I'm setting this volume envelope is that I do not have velocity at all as part of this equation because I don't want to have to worry about hitting the keys consistently. I want to only hear the changes I'm making to the envelope. So now I'm going to go and set that. And on the um, Roland here, it's in the TVA section and it's called level velocity sensitivity right here. And here's a really important thing to understand about velocity. Typically, when it's going to your amplifier, the more you turn up velocity sensitivity, the quieter it gets when you play soft. And that's seems like it should be the same thing as the faster you play, the louder it gets, but it's not. It really is taking away from the volume instead of adding to the volume. Uh, this is a crucial piece of understanding synth programming, is that the engineers were worried that if you could use velocity to add to the volume, that at some point you might accidentally clip the, the synth sound because you might be playing the keys not as fast as possible and turning the volume up to you like it. And at one time when you hit it really loud, all of a sudden it's going to be way louder than you had intended and clip other parts of the audio path. And so typically, and, and, and watch as I do this, I'm going to hit at a really soft velocity. And it doesn't sound any different than a fast velocity. Okay. But now watch as I play slowly and slowly turn up the velocity sensitivity. What's going to change is 
that it gets quieter when I play slow and it's the normal volume when I play fast. So I'm playing slow and I'm gonna turn up the sensitivity. And so now notice that when I play fast, uh, full velocity, it's at the volume level that it originally was at. It's that as I play slower, it's taking away the volume. And I know I'm repeating myself, but this is crucial to understand. So normal, and then coming down. In fact, while you're doing this, one of the skills you really want to learn is how to hit the keys as slowly as possible to hear the, the, the lowest velocity value. Then you can set how much you want the volume taken away in that instance. And surprisingly, you don't usually want dramatic volume differences. This, this seems like it'd be a great idea, but in reality, trying to do it live, it's very difficult to not have all your sounds be uneven, so. It's, it's not useful. So it's actually more useful to have the volume change be subtle. And so I come up with a little rhythm and so I'm alternating between a reasonably soft velocity, slow velocity, and then a fast velocity. And always be aware that when you're adjusting the sensitivity, what you're really doing is setting how quiet it gets. The loud's always gonna stay the same. And so maybe that's still too much. What you really want is just enough that you can do an accent, but not constantly worry that when you play, your notes sound uneven volume wise. So I'm gonna reduce it a little more here. And so it just allows me to do something like this. Maybe I'll give it just a little more. But again, this is what you're tweaking. You're gonna constantly play between your lowest velocity and your highest and keep tweaking and always be listening to what the lowest velocity is doing because that's what you're adjusting. So now we'll pull out another synth. Okay, so now I have the subsequent 37 analog synth. Uh, it's a mono synth that you can hit a duo mode and kind of do a duo paraphony. Um, but right now I'm just gonna have one oscillator set to sawtooth. I know, boring, but that's the way you gotta, you have to have everything uh, as, uh, as predictable as possible when you're trying to learn about one section because you don't want anything else to throw you off. So again, boring sawtooth wave by itself, no detuning, no nothing and my amplitude envelope, uh, like I always start out, instant attack, instant decay, full on sustain, instant release, and that's what I call the organ envelope. On the subsequent 37 and the sub 37, uh, when you push this knob shift mode instead of what these words are and what these parameters do, it now, each of these four knobs do what these four parameter names say. And so, uh, for example, uh, velocity amount, which is the third knob, and, and I'm on the amplifier envelope. And so I am no longer adjusting attack, decay, sustain, release, but these four parameters here, and the third one is velocity. So notice that with it all the way down, it doesn't matter whether I hit a key slow or hit a key fast. They're identical volume, right? And as I turn up velocity amount, what you're gonna hear is, on the fast key, no difference at all. But on the slowest press, you're gonna hear great differences. And I can still get back to that full volume by hitting full speed. So what you're going for is, you want it to be not subtle, because if it's too subtle, you don't notice it, but you really don't want it as much as most people think you do. Um, the, the real great way to use velocity 
is for it to be in the right volume range for that song, for that type of performance all the time. And you never want to have velocities where, oh, I accidentally hit that key too soft and now it doesn't balance with the other things. So subtlety is a, is a really good thing. And so now I'm going to turn up and down the velocity amount and try and set it so that the difference between fast velocity and slow velocity is more of an accent than a significant drop in volume. So here we go. I'm hitting fast, I'm hitting slow, and I'm alternating. So I can still do arpeggiations without them feeling like some of the notes are not as loud, you know. But I can still stab something. Or more importantly, I can, if I want to all of a sudden just bring in something subtle, I can play much slower. And that's how you assign velocity to control amplitude envelopes. If you have any further questions about the Juno DS, uh, the Moog Subsequent 37, or any of the other synthesizers you've seen in these videos, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. If you want to watch all of these synth clips in order, we have a playlist in the info section at the bottom. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.